We are welcoming to the studio Mark Hersham. Thank you so much for being here. And congratulations on being the recipient of the 2024 MRS Mid-Career Researcher Award. Thank you very much. So what has happened to the rate of improving performance of computers in recent years? Yeah, so there's, there's two major issues that have, I would say, limited further improvement in computing performance. Uh, the first is power consumption. This is probably the biggest factor. Uh, if we try to run a digital computer any faster than we do today, uh, the temperatures would become uncomfortably high to the point where ultimately the silicon would melt on which the chips are built. That is, of course, not sustainable or possible, so we need to eliminate uh, that possibility by operating at lower speed. Uh, the second issue is that uh, the trajectory for microelectronics has been to make the transistor smaller and smaller with time, thereby increasing the number of transistors per unit area, and we're approaching atomic length scales, which is a fundamental limit. And so the fact that we have a two-dimensional or planar architecture uh, is another fundamental limitation to further improvement in computing performance. So playing off of that, what is the von Neumann bottleneck and what role does it play here? Right, so John von Neumann uh, is credited with the basic design of a digital computer. And that design consists of a memory block and a microprocessor separated in space, which means that you need to move data back and forth between those two blocks. And for the past five decades, the amount of data that, that's been moved is small enough that that was not a limitation. But in today's world of big data, that has become a bottleneck. It limits speed, and perhaps more importantly, the movement of data consumes energy, and that leads to further power consumption limitations. So how can neuromorphic computing possibly circumvent this? Right, so neuromorphic computing is brain-like computing. Mm. And if we look at the brain compared to a digital computer, one of the fundamental differences is that memory and information processing are not separated in space. They're co-localized in space. And as a result, you don't need to move the data around as much. Mm -hmm. And that leads to orders of magnitude lower power consumption compared to a digital computer. Another fundamental difference of the brain is that it's not a two-dimensional system. It's not a planar architecture. It's a three-dimensional system with a higher level of interconnectivity than we have in a digital computer. So how could this system end up being more energy efficient, a possible energy efficient option? Right, so by co-locating memory and information processing, we eliminate the need to move data around. Yep. That will give us a huge reduction in power consumption. Additionally, if we can go to a three-dimensional architecture, then we overcome the limitation of being constrained in two dimensions, where the only option to increase device density is to go smaller. Gotcha. And we can't go any smaller, so we have to now imagine going into the third dimension. Wow. So what's promising about using neuromorphic devices for machine learning and AI, which is a lot of data? You got it. So the way AI gets better is to train it on more data. That's the whole concept of chat GPT, to train it on as much data as possible, which runs into the power consumption limitation. Uh, in fact, it's estimated that by 2027, the training of AI uh, will consume as much energy as entire countries consume, wow. which is an unsustainable path mm -hmm. that we are on. So neuromorphic computing, by reducing power consumption, enables AI to proceed in a sustainable manner. And even more lofty ambition would be to acknowledge that AI, as we have it today, falls far short of real intelligence. And if we ultimately want to mimic real intelligence, then what better hardware platform to use than the brain itself? Hence, neuromorphic computing. All right, fascinating. Thank you so much, Mark. We appreciate it. Thank you.